Proving Ground. The untold story of the six women who programmed the world's first modern computer. Written by Kathy Kleiman. Published by Grand Central Publishing in July of 2022. With a snippet read by Richard Coombs. Available for checkout right now at the Alice Pendleton Library. As I stared at the women in the black-and-white photograph, it seemed as though they were trying to tell me something. I was sitting in Harvard's Lamont Library, a main library for undergraduates, trying to research a paper on American women in the 20th century who were leaders in computing. I knew of only one, Captain Grace Hopper of the U.S. Navy, later Rear Admiral Hopper. Of course, there was Lady Ada Lovelace, daughter of British poet Lord Byron, who worked on early programming concepts in the 19th century, but she was out of scope for an American women's history course. I was a young woman in computing, and I wanted to know if there were others. I had taken computer science since I started college, and while my early programming courses were composed of about half women, my latest class had only one or two. I knew I would feel more comfortable in computing if I saw a few more women in class with me, and this drove my interest in who came before me and what they had done. Open before me, spread across the reading room table, were encyclopedias of computer science and histories of computing. Noticeably absent in all of them were the names of women, except Ada and Grace. But noticeably absent, too, was any real history of programming. The stories were all about hardware, and the men who built the mainframe computers that dominated computer history in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. But what about those who pioneered ways to communicate with larger computers? Instruction codes and programming languages also date back to the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, but where were the stories of the people who wrote them? Then I stumbled on a black-and-white photograph of a huge black metal computer dominating three sides of a large room and dwarfing six people, four men and two women. There were two men in the middle of the photo, two women on the right with a man in uniform between them, and a man in the back left. Only the two men in the middle were named, J. Presper Eckett and Dr. John Mouchley, co-inventors of ENIAC, the world's first all-electronic programmable general-purpose computer. It was built at the University of Pennsylvania during World War II. Nowhere in the captions or accompanying article were the other people in the photograph named. I studied the image closely, especially the women. They were young, with World War II-era hairdos, flat shoes, and skirt suits. As I leaned in closer, what struck me was that they seemed to know something about ENIAC. They appeared to be comfortable, knowledgeable, as they adjusted knobs on and read documents next to this vast, seemingly living and breathing giant. I could not stop looking at them. I knew something about computers. My father was an electrical engineer who specialized in new technologies. He brought home electronics for us, including an early calculator, clunky and huge compared to today's versions, with only a few functions, but fascinating and fun to play with. He was the first person I knew to talk about speech synthesis and voice recognition. My father had written his dissertation on the founding of the semiconductor industry and was certain that the miniaturization of electronics would continue and would keep changing the world. Friends asked me in junior high school if I wanted to learn to program computers, and I said yes. So I joined an Explorer Post, a co-ed branch of the Boy Scouts dedicated to career exploration, and went off to spend my Wednesday nights at Western Electric, a manufacturing arm of AT&T, near my home in Columbus, Ohio. I learned BASIC, a programming language invented at Dartmouth in the 1960s. Soon I was playing games my friends wrote and adding one of my own, a version of Mad Libs that I wrote in BASIC. The first time my friends played it and laughed out loud at the funny story the computer printed, I knew I was hooked on programming. Looking at the old black and white picture and the men and women standing before ENIAC, I longed to know more about their story. I dug deeper, found more books, and uncovered another photograph. This one was a close-up, showing two women standing right in front of ENIAC. Once again, no names of the women, only the name of the computer. I made copies of both pictures and took them to my professor. 
Anthony Ottinger was a former president of the Association for Computing Machinery and International Group for Computing Professionals. I showed him the two ENIAC photos. Who are the women? I asked. I don't know, Professor Ottinger said, but I know who might.